Up until now, you've learned a little bit about cell theory and of course that cells can be observed with microscopes. So now you need to know how to draw and label cells that you either observe or are shown images of. Firstly, you should know two key terms, prokaryote and eukaryote. We'll compare these cells in another lesson, but for now, let's get to grips with what those words actually mean. When you see the term prokaryote, you just need to read it as bacteria, since that's what all prokaryotes are, bacterial cells. Why? Well, the first part of the name pro means before, whilst the karyote part means nut. So the word literally means before nut. The nut part, karyote, refers to the description of the nucleus within the cell. But bacteria don't have a nucleus, hence the term prokaryote, before nucleus. Okay, so prokaryotes are bacterial cells that do not have a true, well-defined nucleus. What then does eukaryote mean? Eu means true, and as we've already established, karyote means nut, or more accurately, the nucleus. Therefore, eukaryote literally means true nut, which means, of course, that the eukaryotic cells have a true, well-defined nucleus. So eukaryotes are cells with a true, well-defined nucleus, and that means eukaryotic cells are any kind of cell other than bacteria, the prokaryotes. The cells you need to be able to draw, recognize, and label are, number one, a generalized structure of a prokaryote, a bacterial cell. Number two, the generalized structure of an animal cell. And number three, the generalized structure of a plant cell. We'll begin with the simplest. So let's draw and label a prokaryote. So here's my simple bacterial cell. And if we label it, we have A, its cell wall. B, we have the cell membrane. C, we have some circular DNA. And at D, the cytoplasm. E, the ribosomes. F, a plasmid and G, the flagella. Next, let's draw a typical animal cell. And we'll begin labeling this cell with A, its cytoplasm. B, we have its ribosomes. C, the cell membrane. D, the nucleus. E and F are inside of the nucleus and can be labeled as DNA, the genetic material, and chromosomes, genetic material. Finally, we have G, which is the mitochondria. Lastly, let's draw a typical plant cell, which is just like an animal cell with a few extra bits. Plant cells have a cell wall labeled A here, and B is the cell membrane. C is for the chloroplasts, which of course are the sites of photosynthesis. D is the nucleus containing the genetic material. E, we have ribosomes. F mitochondria, G, the cytoplasm, and finally H is the plant cell's permanent vacuole. Now, you'll need to know a little bit about those labels, like what does the nucleus contain, or what is the function of the ribosomes? So when you can confidently draw, label, and identify these cells, and their relevant bits, then you'll be ready to continue to the next lesson where we'll describe the functions of them.